I'm going to read two poems in response to Mary Burke's At Home on the Farm exhibition, which I hope to travel to Limerick to see in the not too distant future. Um, the first of these poems is titled The Post Hole. And it's about a, an encounter between a man of the cloth and a group of farmers. The Post Hole. In need of respite from the life of the mind and divine contemplation. Magamoc was digging a post hole when the farmers who'd left their work to find him, because they were troubled and in need of answers, came upon him in the bottom field, where the monks in the chapel told them he'd be. In a hole so deep, he could have been sinking a well. The sight of the saint crouched down in it, stopped them in their tracks. He was grunting under the shovelfuls of muck he was flinging up, pumping sweat and cursing when he struck rock, easing the welts in his palms with gobs of spit, his cassock knotted at the knees to keep it clean, his boxwood crucifix and beads lying in a heap beside the holes because they were a hindrance to the work. When the farmer sought to divine the meaning of this sight and asked the saint, he explained to them what they already knew, that the post hole for the corner post, the one he was digging, needed to be that much deeper for the post to take the strain and the fence to last. So, when the hole was deep enough, because he could go no deeper, and his clear mind clearer for the labour. The saint replaced his beads over his head, undid the cassock knot, and went back to his cell to practise the art of forgetting himself, while the men returned to their work in the fields, their questions answered, and their minds at ease. The second poem features just one farmer and he, he's mostly absent, he's entirely absent from the poem. North of the village. He would live on the clippings of tin and if he gave the last of a lambing away season after season think no less of him for this was good husbandry and strong twins fetched a sight more than a middling threesome at R.D. Fair. There is a mowing bar propped in a corner, under a portrait of St. Martin de Porres, a bearing still in the plastic he bought it in, parts of the briar pipes he smoked, kept in a biscuit tin, in the hopes of making one decent one the insides of carbide lamps from a life lived in a blackout. His bed, its wrought iron ends, as much a machine as the mangle and the dung spreader, manacled by brambles in the haggard. The stone path he took to the village is a strip of high ground where spring grass gets it hard to grow. There, is where he dammed the water to wash. His scythe hangs where he kept it in the thatch. Birds are plundering the horse's collar for nesting material, and the handful of things he hung to dry at the fire are there yet dry as a bone. Out the back, pegs survive on a line, tied between trees groaning under fruit. His damsons are as ripe today as they will ever be. <laughs>